Hi, this is Carl with another SOP video for managed service providers. And today I want to talk about setting up your quarterly employee reviews so that you maximize success and build your culture. Unfortunately, many people in small business do employee evaluations wrong. And there's a few reasons I say that. First of all, they do them once a year. And so there's no continuity throughout 12 months. There's no check-in. There's no verifying that things are getting, you know, headed in the right direction or that you've made tiny little course corrections. Second, many people tie their evaluations to increases in pay. And to be honest, I've made that mistake myself. Whether or not somebody keeps their job is a separate question from how much money they get paid. Whether people are doing their job well is a separate question from whether or not they're going to get an increase in pay. So these two are somewhat related, but do not tie them together. It's very important that you do evaluations at least quarterly. And what I like to do is to try to have quarterly evaluations, but have nearly constant attention to keeping people on track. So here's what we need to do with regard to evaluations. First of all, you need to take one form and then save it as a different form. So the first form is basically, what are your goals for the quarter? What are the things on which we will evaluate your performance? And then you save that and basically turn it into, okay, here's your evaluation that says, how well did you do on each of these things? So in the first form, you need to list things in three different categories. First of all, company wide goals. And this can be as simple as provide excellent customer service. We actually have an item and we've had this for 20 years. We have an item on our evaluation that says provide good relationships between my company and our clients and within our company. So we're huge on having good relationships. Remember one of the absolutely unbreakable rules of service delivery is we only work with people we like. And that requires us to maintain that relationship and for our employees to maintain that relationship. So that first category is company-wide goals. And those are things that for the most part are going to help you improve your culture and improve the things that you want to do as a company. For example, increasing the processes and procedures and the value that you give to SOPs within your company, company-wide goals. The second category is things that have to do with the employee's job generally. For example, if you have a technician, then providing excellent technical support is a legit goal for their job. That's how you do your job. That's how you keep your job. Providing good customer service might be an element of a job. If somebody's in the front office, then accurate billing is a part of their job. Those are almost like definitions of the job. And finally, the third category is things that this specific person needs to work on. So this could be as small as, hey, try to show up at eight o'clock instead of 8.05 on a consistent basis. Don't waste our time, don't waste our money. Maybe take a class or get a certification. All of those things are individual for one person, whether it's, a, again, a technician or a front office or whoever. This is particularly important for salespeople, but also very important for every employee. Every employee should have some kind of stretch goals. Get a little better at your timeliness. Get a little better at finding the right answer right away. Get a little better at learning a particular technology or maybe even take ownership of a project the next time we have a migration project or uh, cloud installation or whatever it might be. So you've got those three categories. Now, in the next SOP video, we're going to talk about where this evaluation fits into 
the bigger picture of hiring and managing employees. But for now, let's just talk about the evaluation. So you set up these goals and you should do it really honest to goodness the first week of the quarter or in a perfect world, the last week of the previous quarter. So that you and the employee both agree, these are the company-wide goals, these are the goals for your role in the company, and these are your very personal goals, things that you're gonna work on. Once you've laid that out, you have set the groundwork for a conversation that will last for the next three months. You, you are now given permission because it's on your evaluation form to say, hey, how you doing on that class? How you doing on that improving your skills? How you doing at coming in on time or putting your notes in the system in a timely fashion, whatever the, the details might be. And I really love the One Minute Manager, a uh, great book that sort of points out that you need to manage people every day. Some bosses, some managers, feel like they're nagging if they constantly tell people, get in on time, get in on time, put your notes in the system, put your time in the system, nag, nag, nag. But it's not nagging. Your technicians, your employees are probably very busy, potentially overwhelmed. They got a lot of stuff going on. And unless you tell them that something is important, they don't know that it's important. It's just one of a million things that they have to keep track of. So constantly reminding them, get your notes in, get your notes in, get your notes in. It, that works its way up among the things that they know that they have to do. It works it to being something that they consider to be important because you consider it to be important. So you spend an entire quarter talking about the things that you have both agreed are their goals for the quarter. And then again, I like to do the last week of the quarter sit down with them and say, okay, let's talk about how you did. And you literally just draw a line from the goals to the evaluation. How did they do at maintaining good relationships between your employees and your clients? How did they do at customer service? How did they do at getting that certification or taking an exam? And then you can sort of give them However you want to score it is up to you, one to 10 or one to five or ABC or whatever makes you happy. But that way they actually see that setting goals and then following through and being consistent in the way that you treat all of this matters. And because you're doing it four times a year, there's no stress to have it attached to an increase in pay. I hope you're not giving me increases in pay every quarter. If you are, I hope there's a good reason for it. But basically, this is a way to have a never ending conversation with your employees about how they're doing. And you know, it's sort of odd that when companies are really small, they tend not to do this at all. But if you only have three employees, it should be pretty easy to keep up on this. And yes, you do have to notch out some time, but let's be realistic. It doesn't take you an hour to fill out an evaluation form of how somebody did, especially if you already have a form where you've literally laid out in writing what the goals are. So just take the goals, turn them into the evaluation and life is good. Now, here's the next thing is if you evaluate somebody in the last week of the quarter, in a perfect world, you should also be able to then set them up with their goals for the next quarter and a lot of them are not gonna change. That company-wide stuff probably doesn't change very often. The stuff that's specific to their role in the company probably doesn't change very often. So that means the only part that really changes is, okay, great, you got that cert, what's the next cert? You, you finished that class, what's the next class? You're getting into work on time, now you're gonna need to focus on getting your notes in on a, in a timely manner. This is again an ongoing conversation, but it should sort of weave its way through the entire year. And at the end of the year, you don't need an annual evaluation because you've given them four data points throughout the year. And you've done that daily checkup with the one minute manager technique that allows you to have a very casual conversation with your employees all the time about how they're doing. This process seems a little complicated, but trust me, it's very easy and it will improve your culture 
and it will improve the quality of the service that you're able to deliver. Check in next time. We're going to talk about where this fits into the hiring and management process at a higher level. For Small Biz Thoughts, this is Carl Palchuk wishing you the best of luck in your managed service business.